It's the Royal Douglas Wave. Today on the Pretend Cooking Show, we are making bread with my handy dandy college student, Hunter. But first, but first, we are going to harvest yeast from fruit. This is the fruit that we're using. We cut up one apple and we put it in a ball jar with some water and let it sit for seven days. We've got cheesecloth on top so nothing gets in. The apple was unwashed. And we did the same thing with unwashed grapes and then we put them in a ball jar too and they've sat for a week as well. Let's see if we get some yeast. All right, about 70 grams of flour. And now 70 grams of the grape water. And now we just mix those together. And there's some natural yeast in the air, and that you could you could just use water and flour and make a nice paste. It's not too not too thick, not too thin, just right. And we're going to leave this overnight to start bubbling. Start bubbling. Uh, it, it will. The bubbles will grow and grow and grow, and this should rise up as as the yeast does its work. So here's our grape yeast starter. Grape yeast. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, look at that! It is all bubbly and raised. And this is actually seven days old now. We've been feeding it every day, feeding it every day. We put in, we take out about 100 grams of the starter, put in 100 grams of fresh water and starter, and keep doing that day after day after day after day. It gets sour and yummy and smelly, and then we use it in the bread. So what is yeast? This is a drawing of what you would see if you looked at yeast under a microscope. So yeast is a fungi that's really, really small. So other fungi could be mushrooms, but mushrooms are a lot bigger and you can see them outside, but yeast is really small. So yeast lives outside too, but in nature you would find yeast on the outside of fruits such as apples or grapes or other fruits that grow outside. But it's really tiresome to harvest yeast every time you want to make bread or something with yeast so you can buy active dry yeast in the supermarket. But why do you actually need yeast to make bread? So yeast makes bread rise, but how? It does this through a process called fermentation, which is a chemical reaction that happens inside the yeast. And yeast uses this chemical reaction to make energy. So sugar from the flour goes into the yeast and the yeast does fermentation and it produces CO2, ethanol, and energy. So CO2 is a gas 
which makes bubbles. And so you can imagine it as if you're blowing into a glass of milk. When you blow in, CO2 goes in and it produces lots of bubbles with looks like it makes the milk rise. This is the same thing that's happening in bread. So the yeast produces bubbles, which is why we need it. So you can think of it as a three-step process. First, you add yeast. Next, the yeast produces CO2 gas. And next, it makes the bread rise. So these is our yeast bubbles in a sourdough starter. Through the magic of everything, we are now seven days later and we have moved our starter into ball jars and we have a nice, lively, bubbling, oozing, gooey, lovely starter. We have the, is this apple grape. or grape? This is, we have the grape starter. And, and this is the apple. Right? And so we've been feeding it and, um, and taking care of it and you should check on YouTube uh, for you know how to do that for your own starter, but basically uh, this is alive now and ready to Makes turn sense. into sourdough bread. So this is a gluten-free starter, but we're going to make regular glutinous uh, sourdough bread for our glutinous friends. First, we wash our hands. Thank you. Now on to the actual bread making. You will need water. 230 grams. Flour. 400 grams. It's your basic all-purpose flour. Some salt. 5 grams. And your fantabulous natural yeast mm, starter. 160 grams. This is enough to make one loaf of bread. So first, we're going to combine the flour, water, and salt. Next, we're going to add our starter. Don't be afraid to use your hands, but you can wet them to make sure the dough doesn't stick. This is so exciting. Love dough. You gotta be willing to get your hands dirty, or your assistant's hands dirty. Your sidekick, this is what sidekicks are for. All the dirty work. Um, when you're making dough. That's part of the joy of making bread dough. And then you can just dump it out onto your counter and start, and start working it there. And this should be a kind of wet dough. All right, now we're gonna work that dough until it's nice and pliable and happy. The dough should be a bit sticky but try to resist adding more water um, or flour. Or flour. Kneading builds up the gluten in the bread, which is a protein in the flour, and it helps the bread rise and it helps the dough really stick together well. A good indicator to tell when it's a good time to stop you're kneading is something called the window pane effect. And basically, if you make kind of a window pane in the bread, it should not rip. This ripped, so it is not done. The gluten is not strong enough to hold the dough together. So, while I've been doing this, Dr. Whitbeck has been feeding our starter to make sure that it is alive and healthy for the next time that we make sourdough. And we are just putting it in the fridge now um, to slow down its metabolic processes so we don't have to feed it as often. And I think our dough is ready, but I am going to check to see 
if it can withstand the window pane test. Treatment. So, oh, yeah. you can stretch it a lot, and it won't <laughs> rip. Look at that. Incredible. Alright, now we're ready for proofing. Proving or proofing, depending or on where you're from. Uh, you have to let your dough rest now, and you have to let it grow. Uh, so, if you're in Ireland, it's called proving. If you're in here, it's called proofing. Uh, just put a little dollop of olive oil. This is from uh, Mr. Kunalakis' Olive Groves. And then you take your lovely, fantastic feeling you're not gonna spread it. dough and you just run it over that olive oil so that it doesn't stick. And we've got a nice round loaf of dough. And Put some cling wrap on it. Now most doughs rise in about an hour. Sourdough takes a lot longer. So we've got it all sealed up and it is ready to rest and we will be right back after three or four hours. We're back! Four hours later. More than four hours later. Uh, and our dough has risen beautifully. And how's it smell? Mm. Smells like sourdough. Smells like bread. And now we're going to take it out and put it on the surface. So go ahead and put it out. Nice. I think it needs flour. It needs flour on the surface. We put some flour down. You don't want to use a lot of flour, so I poured some of it out, spread it around. Here we go. Now this is not a time to really knead the dough, but we just want to form it into a nice circular dough. So you lay it down and you start folding it on top of itself. So before Hunter was really pressing on it, now we're being gentle and folding it on top of itself, just a little bit, trying to form a nice circle. And what you'll see is that along the edges, if you go from side to side to side, it starts to form itself into a circle. And you don't really have to do anything else with it. See, it's just forming a nice round dough. And now, if you pull it towards you, a little bit, yeah, and then push it back and pull it towards you, you get this nice round uh, ball of dough. All right, and now it's time to put it into its proofing basket. So some people have a professional proofing basket, uh, but we're going to use a Pyrex bowl because um, we don't have a professional proofing basket because we are not professionals. We're just amateur bread bakers. Our first, this is our first sourdough bread. All right, put our nice tea towel or dish towel, as they call them, in, and then we're going to take some of that flour that we've got on our counter, and we're going to very liberally flour the, uh, flour the basket so that the bread does not stick to the towel very much. And it's really nice if you have a sifter, you can sift that on there and you can sift it on your assistant. All right, and then the bread goes into the basket. Boop. Put a little, just a little bit of flour on top of it. And fold that over. And we are going to proof this the second time in the fridge overnight. Most breads, you can't do that. Sourdough rises so slowly and is so happy, wrapped in its little bass, its little towel, that um, you can put it in the fridge overnight. And then in the morning, 
bake your sourdough. See you then. Good morning. <laughs> it's time to check our bread. Ooh. Already. Already to bake, hopefully. Oh, it is beautiful. Don't be afraid to touch your bread. Uh, it should be uh, responsive to the touch. It should come right back up. Um, and if you are worried about the bread not doing that, then it is not time to cook it. But ours is perfect, ready to go. Okay, so now just um, dust it lightly with a, a little bit of flour. And then you're going to flip it into a Pyrex dish. One, two, two three. three. Flip. And we should be able to take this bowl and put it in the sink. And then very gently move our bread into the right spot. It should move easily because uh, it has flour on it. And then we're going to put a little flour, a little dusting of flour on top of that. Look how beautiful it is. It's so round. And then we have to score it. So you just cut into the bread and the bread should open a little bit. Uh, you'll know you're deep enough when your bread opens up. Scoring was also a way that bakers put their signature onto the bread. So you could you would know that your bread came from a specific baker based on the way that the bread was scored. So there's our scoring. Um, not too deep, not too shallow, and now it's time for the oven. Preheat your oven to 446 degrees or 450. Humidity is very important for the bread. Uh, what does it do? It prevents the bread from forming a crust too early because if it forms a crust too early, the inner part of the bread might break the crust and you will not have a pretty loaf. Oh, excellent. Good to know. So we're going to put another Pyrex dish right on top of this and bake it like that for 25 minutes. It will get the humidity that's already, the moisture that's already in the bread will keep it nice and moist, allow it to rise. Mm -hmm. And after 25 minutes, we're going to take this off and, and bake it for another 25 minutes. And then we'll have bread. Bread. All right, let's go to the oven. Dad, the sourdough's done. Can you take it out of the oven? You got your knife, you're ready to cut. I'm ready. Let's it's cut. It's been 25 minutes. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Cooked nicely. Perfect sourdough, a little pungent. Try it. Nice and warm. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, that is sourdough bread. That is sourdough bread. Try some at home. It is fun. It is a great family relaxation. Here we'll have a family member come. Just reach your hand in, family member. There you go. <laughs> For some bread. Uh, take some time now, be together as a family, so make some bread. Really See you soon.